I know that anesthesia choices can sometimes feel like you're at a crossroads, especially when it comes to joint replacement surgeries or those nifty short ambulatory procedures in our more challenging patients. But today, I've got some insights that might just sway you toward a game-changing option, spinal anesthesia. Ever considered spinal anesthesia as your go-to technique for ambulatory procedures? And if not, stick around, because by the end of this video, you might just have a new favorite for many of those ambulatory procedures. So let's talk about the why and how to spinal anesthesia for joint replacement surgery and for short ambulatory operations. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video useful. Let's roll. While spinal anesthesia is often hailed as the gold standard for operating room efficiency because it can be performed outside of the operating room, its lingering effects can sometimes be a double-edged sword. The extensive block of proprioception and autonomic function might lead to patients taking a little longer to feel back to normal. This can manifest as delayed ambulation or delayed maturation and postural hypotension or drop in blood pressure while standing up. These side effects, though manageable, can delay the discharge of patients undergoing same-day surgeries. This isn't just an inconvenience for the patient. It can also lead to a backlog in the post-anesthesia care unit. So what is the solution? Enter short-acting local anesthetics for spinal anesthesia, chloroprocaine, and pralocaine. But before we get to the nitty-gritty on these, let's first discuss why spinal anesthesia may be the very best anesthesia technique for hip and knee replacement surgery at the very least. Spinal anesthesia is increasingly favored over general anesthesia for patients undergoing joint replacement surgery due to its superior safety profile. Several studies have demonstrated that spinal anesthesia is associated with a lower risk of postoperative complications, including deep venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and respiratory complications when compared to general anesthesia. Furthermore, patients receiving spinal anesthesia often report less postoperative pain, reduced opioid consumption, and a quicker return to mobility. These findings have significant implications for patient recovery and overall healthcare costs, and notably, a comprehensive review by Pugely and colleagues in 2013 reported fewer adverse outcomes with spinal anesthesia in joint replacement procedures. Likewise, Mentsudis and colleagues also found that the use of neuroaxial anesthesia, including spinal anesthesia, was associated with a reduced risk of complications and mortality compared to general anesthesia in hip and knee arthroplasty patients. And a slew of other studies have also demonstrated the same. So spinal anesthesia is better than general in most patients, particularly sicker patients having total joint replacement surgery. Spinal anesthesia has an impressive safety record. Complications are rare, making it a reliable option for many elderly and sick patients indeed. And spinal anesthesia is a basic competency for all anesthesiologists, and it is one of the simplest anesthesia techniques to perform. Once performed, there are no induction or emergence issues like there are with the general anesthesia. In our practice, patients are brought to the operating room anesthetized under spinal anesthesia and ready for surgery, so there is no waiting around for anesthesia induction or for the effects of general anesthesia to wear off post-surgery. The spotlight now is on the surgery itself, devoid of any OR delays. This is why our surgeons love spinal anesthesia for total knee and total hip replacement surgery. Spinal anesthesia eliminates the wake-up phase post-surgery. Patients don't have to groggily come out of a general anesthetic haze, and this not only ensures they feel better after the operation, but also simplifies post-operative management and decreases the burden of post-operative nursing care in the post-operative care unit. Patients having spinal anesthesia typically present fewer challenges in the post-anesthesia care unit Pack you and ensures that the patients are well on their way to rehabilitation faster. In summary, if you are gearing up for ambulatory hip or knee replacement, spinal anesthesia isn't just an option. It might be the best choice as it is in our practice. Its combination of safety, efficiency, and decrease of burden of care in the PACU makes it a top choice. However, if you stick with us to the end of the video, you will find out that there is a catch and that there is a solution to it. 
The diminished proprioception and autonomic response can mean that it takes patients a bit longer to regain their usual sensation and mobility. The consequences? The patient may experience delays in starting to walk, pass in urine, and may also face a sudden decrease in blood pressure upon standing. While these side effects can be managed, they do have the potential to postpone the release of patients who have had day surgeries. This does not only inconvenience the patient, but also can result in a post-anesthesia care getting overwhelmed. The answer to this challenge is short-acting local anesthetics like chloroprocaine and pralocaine. They result in a fast onset and offset of anesthesia, leading to a more consistent and more predictable recovery. Let's talk about chloroprocaine. The dose is typically 40 to 50 milligrams, and the onset is rapid, usually within five minutes, and the duration is about 45 to 60 minutes, depending on the dose and patient factors. It is ideal for short urology, cystoscopy, neoarthroscopy, and for instance, anterior hip replacement procedures. Often it is best performed in the operating room to avoid delays in patients' transfers to the operating room from the block room. Its duration of action can also be extended by about 30% by the addition of a small amount of intrathecal opioids, a fentanyl and 25 micrograms. The commonly used doses for pralocaine range between 50 to 80 milligrams of 2% hyperbaric solution. The onset is generally within 10 minutes and it lasts about 60 to 90 minutes. Pralocaine has a slightly longer duration compared to chlorprocaine and additional fentanyl intrathecally also prolongs the duration by about 30%. The hyperbaric property of pralocaine allows for manipulation of the height of the block and it is an excellent choice for a saddle block or urologic or GYN surgery. Short-acting spinal anesthetics like chlorprocaine and pralocaine render spinal anesthesia applicable for ambulatory procedures ensuring smooth and more predictable recovery. Keep in mind that because short-acting spinal anesthesia, well, wears off quicker than more commonly used bupivacaine or ropivacaine spinal, it is essential to have multimodal analgesia protocols in place to avoid rebound pain after the spinal anesthesia wears off. All right, folks, that wraps up my dive into the world of ambulatory spinal anesthesia. But remember, every patient and procedure is unique. But also, it is always exciting to have a powerful options like spinal anesthesia in our toolkit. And if you want to share your own experience with short-acting spinal anesthesia or have questions about today's topic, drop them down in the comments below. We love hearing from our Nysora community. Until next time.